This is in response to an email I received about talking about more about making money. Um, now, I want to sort of put out there the point of this channel is not simply about myself, but it's actually trying to encourage people to do better with their own lives. So you've got to have a starting point. Now, the starting point for most people is actually reducing debt. The starting point is getting debt free. The starting point is looking at what you can already do. Um, financially, myself, I've got money from last year. There's still money bank from the year before. I've got monies and savings and investments. Um, all the Philippine stuff that we have is already paid for. It's all paid for in cash. The fact is I'm debt free. The only thing that costs me money here in Spain is the apartment we're living in. So you've got to understand that to move forward, a lot of it is not about gaining more money, it's managing the money you have already. Now I can go in depth with what how I can well how I can and how I do make money, but I think that will come along later. Um, quite simply I'm adjusting things myself here, but also I think from the perspective of helping other people out, I think it's more they need to look at what they're doing first. Um, what do I mean? Well, for example, if your mortgage is hammering your cash flow on a monthly basis and the money you've got coming in breaks even every month, can you reduce what you're spending on other stuff? For example, do you have um, premium cable TV when you're at work most of the time and don't actually need to watch it? So what's the point? Have you, you know, all the movies on there are like at least six months a year old and you don't really use it. Can you get rid of that package? Those sort of things have a major impact because even if you transferred the money you normally spend on that onto credit card debt, onto your mortgage or whatever, even paying a little bit extra every month reduces the time at the end because it's the reverse snowball effect. Um, because with a, this snowball effect is where you concentrate on reducing your debt and then you keep rolling it because what happens is you've got a fixed amount every month but as debts um, are paid off you then have more to pay the other debts off so it snowballs you're paying it off faster and faster well with debt it's the other way around you end up with more and more debt and at longer time pay periods to pay it so your mortgage is like 25 years but if you've got the snowball effect going that may become 20 years, 15, 10, because you're paying it off as fast as you can. Um, and that is more important than trying to work out how I make an income, because a lot of people cannot replicate how I do it. I'm not saying that everybody can't, I'm saying that in the broader spectrum of things, a lot of people can't do it, um, because they don't have the same skill set. But in the same way, if you have specific skills, is the more you can do with it. You know, for example, uh, a friend of mine does injection molding. Um, all he does is sit in the machine and push this thing in and out all day because it's, uh, it's it's not big stuff. But at the same time, what did he do? He bought another machine and put it in his garage. So he does his work at the factory he works at, and then he does exactly the same at home uh, for another person. That is him getting out of debt. That's him getting debt free. Yes, the machine cost him, I think it was about 15, 20,000 pounds, but at the same time, it's generating money. It's, it's paying itself off. And obviously, he could actually get somebody else in there when he's not there doing exactly the same. They just push this thing in and out. It's, it's fairly basic, let's put it that way. It's not one of these big computerized ones where it's spinning around and doing all the work. It's, it's basically you push the thing in manually, it sort of injects it, then you take it out, and then you undo it, take it out, check it's right, then put another one in. And it's, it's a very simple machine, but at the same time, it pays the bills. So that sort of thing for him works. But obviously I can't say to you, go and get an injection molding machine because you'll go, I've never worked in injecting molding. That's what I'm talking about. Everything's different for every person. That's why I don't really concentrate on what I actually do for financial income. Um, where do I make my biggest income? The answer is spreadsheets. I am very, very good at Excel. Um, I'm very good from a technical background for engineering. So that's where I focus because even trying to get out of that business, people keep offering me work there. So I end up going back into it. So that's the reality is 
but could you get the same knowledge as me? Uh, the company that I was working with up until last week, uh, last Wednesday, I think I finished, um, they went through 130 people until they got somebody that could actually do it, which is myself. And bear in mind, all these people are skilled engineers, but having skilled engineers with a broad spectrum of knowledge on different types of engineering, along with the ability to manage spreadsheets, asset management, uh, identifying missing assets, etc. There aren't many people that do it. Uh, it's a very niche market. Uh, that is the reality of it. Um, so there's no point me saying you could do what I can do because a lot of people can't. And it's not because I'm saying I'm better than everybody else. It's quite simply a lot of people try and can't do it. And they're from engineering. Um, in the same way, we've had people from the business community that are very, very good on computers, but no idea what they're looking at when they walk into a plant room. So it's it's one of those ones where you need that cross-platform of skills and there aren't many people do it that way. You know, it, it's it's a mix, mix mash of different skills. So I would say that debt management is probably the first element. If you're looking to go to the Philippines, if you're looking to change your life, it's getting rid of debt first, day one. It's often the one that nobody wants to talk about, the one nobody thinks there's a way out of it. Um, they don't. They bury their head in the sands. Yet, if you focused on it, you get rid of that debt, you can do a hell of a lot more. Once the debt's gone, you'll find that everything starts becoming so much easier. You've got no mortgage, so you've suddenly got an extra three, four hundred pounds a month, or um, your car's paid off, so you don't have to worry about your car. But on top of that, you start saving for your next car, so that when you buy your next car, there is no finance on it because you're paying it in cash. Um, that's basically the life skill on this is basically get debt free, get debt free and then work from there. The other thing is like I say, if you're working eight hours a day in one job and think, well, there's something I could do at home for four hours a day. Um, I'll give you some examples of what some of my friends do. One of them does um, custom made jewelry and silver. One does cake making. One of them does engraving. They bought an engraving machine that sit and engraves people's names on pens and whatever they want. Another one does business cards from his garage. These people have all got small little businesses that are basically wiping out their debt. It's wiping it out. And once they get ahead, they then have that same business model that will continue to help them save. Because one of the things I do is I move specific money i've mentioned this before about my box method where you have a box for this bill you put your bills and your expenses and your savings and separate them all out so that you know exactly how much you need to put in each but at the same time you know what's left over because the final box is what's left because you pay all the other ones first um but it, once you get ahead you start having money that you can say i'm going to put that in savings and what i do with that is i work out an annual saving and I split it down into weeks. How much do I want a week to retire, travel the world, whatever you want to do. And basically what you're trying to do is with your savings, have a plan of getting rid of the weeks that you normally work by replacing it with savings money. So what am I talking about? So say you have a like peer-to-peer -peer lending fund. Your peer-to-peer -peer lending is still in its early stages, so say it only makes a thousand pounds a year. So how much do you need to earn to pay all your bills currently and be comfortable? A thousand pounds a month. So okay, so there you go. You've got 250 pounds a week off that. So that's one month of the year you don't have to work. So you now have 11 months that you need to find money to make without actually physically working. And that's how I work. This is how my long-term pension plan works. It's basically I remove months from my year, basically working months, working weeks, working days, whatever your finances are, you start planning so that you can actually sit back um, and reduce the amount of work you're doing. But also, the money I have in peer-to-peer -peer lending, because I don't need it for the next decade, 
it's rolling. So every month, well, yeah, it's literally every month, there's payments coming back in that are then lent back out, and it just keeps rolling. It's growing on an annual basis. It's growing on a monthly basis. It's a, a continuous investment. So this is a bit like the snowball effect. Um, the earlier you pay it off, like with your mortgage, you pay it off, the quicker you're debt free. In this case, the earlier you start investing, the, the less years you need to invest to get to that point where you don't have to work anymore. That's it. It's as simple as that. I know it's, it sounds a bit strange, but that's exactly how all this works. There's no magic solution, you know, because I know people, you know, think they're bang, oh, you know, I'll win the lottery and I'll be fine. You look at the amount of people that failed after they won the lottery. The answer is they don't know how to manage money. It doesn't matter how much money they have. They would have spent it all. The, re the realities of this is you need to be able to manage your money first. And this is where the beginning. You need to sit there and analyze where you're hemorrhaging your cash. And then you sit there and you go, right, I'm paying too much on my credit cards. I'm paying for satellite TV I don't even watch. I, <clears throat> I have a gym membership, but I haven't been this year. And start looking at stuff where you're wasting money. They literally, you could go, hello, cancel my gym membership. I don't come in anyway. Um, and I know that may sound a bit, oh, well, you should go at the gym. Yeah, you should, but you're not. So why pay for it? Because the amount you're spending on that gym membership, you may find another 18 months down the line, the amount you would have saved, you could buy yourself a home gym or whatever. The point being here is you need to focus on the main thing that is today is your debt. Once you get rid of that debt, you start focus on your savings, you start focus on where you want to be. Thanks for watching.